the topic for today's video is uh, inclining experiment and this is in the area of advanced ship stability so let's get started and let's talk about what is an inclining experiment how is it to be conducted and what are some of the essential precautions to be observed when carrying out this experiment we'll also talk about the formula which is derived from this experiment so here it is so inclining experiment is an experiment which is carried out on a newly built ship or on a ship which has undergone major structural changes to ascertain or determine her light kg so kg of the vessel when she has no cargo on board uh, kg is the distance between the center of gravity of the vessel and her keel once the kg of the light ship is known that is the kg of the ship without cargo is known her kg for any condition of loading can also be obtained so as you see in the figure here inclining experiment involves the shifting of the weights and uh, noting the deflection i will talk more about it later on but let's uh, first see how is the formula derived from the inclining experiment so as you can see here uh, formula number one uh, is gg1 which is equal to wd by w here gg1 is the shift in the center of the gravity as you see in the figure here this is the shift in the center of the gravity when the cargo shifts uh, so small w here is the weight of the cargo that shifts the d is the distance by which it shifts and the capital w is the vessel's displacement so if you see above in triangle gg1 or ggm rather gg1m gg1 will be equal to gm tan theta this is tan theta equals uh, gg1 by gm so gg1 will be equal to gm tan theta now if i equate equations 1 and 2 because equations 1 and 2 both give me the formula for finding out gg1 if both of them are equal to gg1 then wd i'll keep the figure here wd uh, by w will be equal to gm tan theta from equations number 1 and 2 because both equations are uh, giving the values of gg1 so we will remove gg1 from the equation and uh, the values on the right side of the equation are equated with each other this forms equation number three now also in triangle ast above you can see a s and t st equals a s tan theta now remember theta is the heel or the list that has been caused rather by the shifting of the weight now how is that weight shifted why is it shifted how many weights are involved we'll talk all about that later on right now we are only focusing on the formula so here tan theta equals st by as based on the triangle above ast all right now if tan theta equals st by as we'll put the value of tan theta in equation number three and equation number four which gives us if gm tan theta equals wd by w i will put st by as instead of tan theta and this equation will become gm multiplied by st by as equals wd by w or gm will be equal to wd by w as goes up st comes down when taken to the other side and this is the equation that is resulting but as is also equal to the length of the plumb line when upright and st is equal to the deflection of the plumb line so if you see above you can see st the distance st is the deflection of the plumb line so the plumb line is the center line so when it is upright it is as and when it's deflected it is st all right so that is the st is the deflection of plumb line that's why gm equals wd by w multiplied by length of the plumb line when upright divided by the deflection of plumb line now in these equations we can also get the km value from the hydrostatic tables or metacentric diagram and we can get the kg of the light ship also from the hydrostatic tables the kg used in this graph of questions makes allowance for the discharge of weights that is for light ship and any kind of free surface effect is also corrected so this kg is actually kg corrected uh, corrected for the free surface effect in tanks we'll talk more about that later on as well so how is the 
inclining experiment conducted. This experiment is carried out when the vessel is in completely finished state of construction or almost so. It is in initial upright condition with a reasonable trim as possible. Vessel should be in a sheltered place with no effects of wind, current or tides. The shore gangway should be removed and as few people as necessary as required for the experiment should be on board and stationed on the center line of the vessel. The IMO code of intact stability states that while conducting this experiment, heel produced for any shift of weight shall not be less than 2 degrees and not more than 4 degrees. If the heel produced is large, KM transverse will change and the heel produced will not be proportional to the healing moment applied. For larger ships, the lower limit of heel can be up to 1 degree. The deflection of the pendulum bob should not be less than 15 centimeters. So when the weights are shifted, the deflection of the vessel is calculated by the deflection of the pendulum bob and that deflection should not be less than 15 centimeters. Drafts of the vessel and density of the water of points forward amidships and aft are accurately noted before the experiment. Usually four weights of equal mass are used in the experiment. Now if you can see here in the figure the weights are four of them they are of equal mass and they are shifted one by one from port to starboard and starboard to port and each time the weight is shifted the deflection F is noted. Now because there are four weights and they are shifted port and then back to starboard there are total eight deflections. So the deflections individual deflections are all added up together and divided by 8 because there are total 8 number of readings so average deflection is found out and this is the average deflection so I have shown you both the sideways and the top side view of the vessel on how the weights are shifted around now weights of equal mass should be chosen and the total mass of all weights should be at least 1 by 500 of the light ship weight. For example, if the light ship weight, that is the weight of the vessel without cargo, is 8000 tons, then 8000 by 500 will be 16 tons. So the four weights should be at least of altogether 16 tons. So four weights, because they have to be of equal value, each weight will be 4 tons. So 4 tons by 4 weights. So the total weight should be at least 16 tons which is 1 by 500 of the light ship weight. So depending on the light ship weight the mass of the total 4 weights taken should be at least at least 1 by 500 of the light ship weight. It could be more. Now again I have given you the formula for the GM and how it is calculated. And you can see from above I showed you how to calculate the average deflection. In some shipyards weights used are of unequal mass. They are not of equal weight or equal mass. In such case the GM is calculated for each move of the weight and finally GM is averaged out to obtain the GM of the vessel with weights on board. Now right below I have shown you how it is done. So when weights of unequal value are chosen, find the GM fluid. Find the GM fluid for each movement of weight. So GM fluid 1 for the first weight will be calculated using the weight 1, the distance by which it moved, divided by the total displacement, multiplied by the length of pendulum, divided by the deflection noted. So this is of weight 1. Similarly, you will note the GM for weight 2. So every time you move the weight, you will be noting the GM or calculating the GM. Not like the previous case. So if all the weights are of equal value, you note down all the deflections and then average out the deflection 
and calculate GM only once but if the weights are different value you will calculate GM every time and every time you calculate GM you calculate it for a port movement and a starboard movement you get four GMs for each weight you average out the four GMs divided by four and you get your GM fluid averaged out so you see the difference when the weights are of equal value you find out average deflection and find GM only once when they are of unequal value you will find out GM every time and then average out the GM this is the main difference so some shipyards also use weights of unequal value but the advice is that it should always be of equal value in vessels with large trim such as newly constructed tankers it will not be possible to obtain the horizontal and vertical positions of center of buoyancy and displacement and transverse metacenter from the hydrostatic particulars or from the metacentric diagram accurately in such cases naval architects have to work out these parameters for the inclined water plane how is it done the pendulum bob is immersed in water of light oil in trough to dampen the swing of the bob during the experiment in some shipyards an instrument called the stabilograph which gives on a rotating drum the heel caused with the base of the trim is also used all right what are precautions necessary when conducting the inclining test the ship must be upright the ship's trim should be such that the deviation from her design trim does not exceed 1% of the total length of the vessel. Her draft should be such that abrupt changes will not occur in her water plane when inclined. An accurate list is to be made of any items of weight yet to be placed on board and those to be removed from the ship together with their kgs and longitudinal center of gravity or LCG so that correct allowance can be made for them in the calculation of the ship's light kg and lcg temporary material toolboxes staging sand debris etc on board should be removed and all personnel not involved in the inclining test should also be sent ashore now you must be wondering where all this material comes from remember the ship is a newly constructed ship or may have undergone recent structural changes or major structural changes so it's cost possible that all these materials are there on the ship. The decks should be free of water and snow or ice should be removed. Preferably all tanks should be empty and clean or completely full to avoid any kind of impact from the free surface effect. Slack tanks should be kept to a minimum, their exact soundings noted and their free surface correction accurately determined to allow for the weights of the liquid in them and their free surface corrections in the calculation of light ship parameters. The ship should be moored in a quiet sheltered area free from external forces such as propeller wash from passing ships or discharge from shoreside pumps. Ideally as I mentioned before there should be no wind current or tide running. The depth of the water should be sufficient to ensure that she will not contact the bottom at any location when inclined. The ship should be so moored as to allow unrestricted healing, access ramps should be removed and power line hoses etc connect to shore should be minimized. All derricks, lifeboats, life rafts, rescue boats etc should be housed and secured in their seagoing condition. The drafts forward, aft and midships should be accurately read on each side of the ship to establish the vessel's water line to determine her displacement accurately at that time. The specific gravity of the water using the hydrometer should be obtained accurately by taking water samples forward, midships and aft at a sufficient depth. Make sure when you are take, taking soundings from the aft, do not take it very close to the sea chest or the propeller wash because that there the density will not be accurate. The test weights should used should be compact such that their volumetric center of gravities can be accurately determined or rather their vertical center of gravities can be accurately determined. Their weights should be accurately recorded. 
water ballast transfer is generally not acceptable for inclining the ship so you must use the weights only so this was a video on the inclining test the formula derived how the inclining test is carried out and the precautions to be observed in my next video i'll also show you a worked example on how the gm is calculated from the formula as derived by the inclining test so i will see you soon with my next video let me know what you thought about this video guys i look forward to your feedback comments uh, whether negative or positive uh, so i'll see you soon bye